gracias y bienvenidos sean todos. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Hex Consortium, I would like to welcome you to the Lehman College Dashboard Tour event. My name is Jerisa Castro. I am the Executive Assistant to the Director and the Public Relations Coordinator of the Hex Consortium. And I will be your host during this event. The purpose of this event is to demonstrate how the Lehman College Business Intelligence Tool works, its, adva its advantages and disadvantages, the implementation process and cost, in order to consider this model as a guide to do something similar at other heads member institutions. Heads is pleased to have you here and hope that this experience will benefit and support your institutional goals, as well as your professional interests. But first, Heads would like to recognize the collaboration and support of the Universidad del Este and Escuela de Hospitalidad y Artes Culinarias Jose A. Tony Santana staff who made possible this event and the recording of it. We are deeply grateful for your support. The recording of this event will be available later at the Heads YouTube channel and website for your convenience and reference. We also would like to welcome all participants here at the Universidad del Este and all of you that will later watch this recording of it. We will appreciate that all participants in, in this room turn your mobile in vibrancy or silent mode to have your full attention to this session and benefit from this initiative. Also, uh, we will avoid interruptions during the report. The Heads Consortium is overly excited to have been able to attain for this event, the participation of member institutions from Puerto Rico interested on this topic. For this event, has invited two outstanding administrators from one of our member institutions, Lehman College. The presenters will have an hour and 15 minutes to present. Then we will have a question and answer session, an open discussion uh, with you, the audience. Also at 10.30 in the morning, we will have a short pause of 15 minutes for a uh, coffee break. We would like to start by introducing our presenters. We are pleased to introduce Mr. Ronald Bergman. He is the Vice President of Information Technology Division and the Chief Information Officer. And also Ms. Lee Newman, Developer of the Information Technology Division from Lehman College of the City University of New York. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to Hess. And um, this is a wonderful classroom. Uh, we very much appreciate being here and uh, participating with you. It's a small group here, um, and uh, we want to maximize the value of this presentation for everybody here. So we're going to put you to work. We're going to engage you uh, and uh, uh, ask you to be as involved and participate in the discussion as possible. So uh, I'm Ron Bergman, I'm the Vice President for Technology and CIO at Lehman College. Been there for five years now. Before that, I was uh, with the City of New York in the technology area as First Deputy Commissioner. And uh, I have loved being part of uh, higher education, especially public higher education, because it has such great import uh, for our students. Um, so let me introduce Lee Milman, ask you to introduce yourself, and then I'm going to ask each of you to also tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lee Milman. I'm the ARC DBA and also the OBIE developer for Lima College. I've been to Lima for almost nine years. Um, but I've been CUNY, uh, the City University of New York, which Lima is part of it, in CUNY for almost um, 12 years. Um, my background is more to data mining, uh, metadata architecture, um, data and uh, database, and also uh, application development. Actually, I started as uh, application development later on moving to the database. And for the past uh, five years since Ron joined us, we have been working on this um, pretty big implementation on the OBI um, for the campus. Um, the system has been live um, completely in campus for the past almost three years and a half. Um, and it's, got very, it's a very exciting um, and challenging project to work on. Uh, I believe some of you probably have some experience with the data mining and data architecture part of the Thank you. And what we have found is that um, in implementing something like business intelligence and analytics, 
that the journey is about two things. It's about the technology, of course, but it's also about the culture in the institution, how the culture uh, supports the use of data. Um, and so we're gonna talk about both of those things with the idea that um, hopefully uh, there's an action plan that you can have coming out of here for what you'll do in your own institution. But perhaps now we could learn from you. And the whole idea of being here today is that we learn from each other. Um, we all have different experiences that are relevant to each other. So uh, we want to learn from you as much as the opposite. So can I ask somebody to start, perhaps you, sir, and introduce yourself and tell us um, what you're doing in your institution with regard to business intelligence. Uh, I'm Robert Garcia, and I'm working at uh, NSU, at uh, Southeastern University. And we have one regional campus in Puerto Rico, a pharmacy. And I am an IT administrator. I work with the computer system, uh, at the video conference, we do an uh, essential video conference, and we're working with the uh, project that is called uh, Polygon. And well, the well, my part, my background is um, basically is uh, programming. Uh, we program the the conference and the uh, uh, program to develop uh, the students that means. Uh, we have some more uh, team, but I do the details. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, I'm not the tech person in the room. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brenda Hernandez Acerero. I am a graduate from Newman College. Um, my grad work was there. I won't say the year. I'll stop saying what year I graduated. Let's not share it anymore. <laughs> Um, I'm here in Puerto Rico now. I am the Vice President of Innovation and Institutional Quality for Atenas College in Manatee. And my role there is to oversee a lot of projects and we're in the midst, you know, we meet some of the staff. Um, we're in the midst of um, doing a distance, distance education. So the process of this, we're trying to, we are very busy people right now. Um, so that's why we're here. Um, and we're part of PETS, so we're very excited that this is uh, great. a good conference for us. Well, it's great to see Lehman College grads yes. doing wonderful yes. things. Congratulations. Yes. And, um, you know, there's a lot of overlap with business intelligence and distance learning. Um, MOOCs, everybody has heard of MOOCs. Uh, we all have different opinions about them, but a great uh, piece of the MOOC and distance learning uh, concept is around collecting data. Um, in some cases, uh, even um, looking at when does a student log in after the class begins? Um, how long do they log in for? So there's, you, you can get a lot of data that can be combined with other data that supports student success. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, great. So on the last side, I'm actually my professor, I'm a nurse, I'm a <laughs> Um, the, um, what you also um, raise is, is something that's critical for us, is that in IT, we can't do things alone. We need the subject matter experts. We need people in the academic or administrative world to be partners with us and co-create, um, because that's the only way things get done. So it's around collaboration and working in, in partnership. And that's, that's um, I think, one of the key uh, measures of success for us we work as the technical experts, but need the subject matter experts because we do not know the nuances of student information systems or all the things that people uh, par who partner with us bring to bear. So a lot of it is getting into a room together, rolling up your sleeves, and sort of figuring it out. But it's, uh, I love the idea that you're involved in innovation. Thank you. Good morning. I'm the director of the Learning Resource Centers and Technology, and we are beginning to take this presentation. Great, thank you. Well, good morning to all of you. My name is Alfredo Calderon. Uh, for the last uh, five years, I, I, I was a consultant for uh, HEADS. Uh, now I'm also part of the Atenas uh, College team, helping them out with their initiative in distance education. I'm also a member of the board of the Internet Society chapter. I'm also a member of the board 
from other organizations and groups that have to deal with uh, broadening the access to data through the web. As a matter of fact, I'm a member of the Junta de Reglamentadora de Telecomunicaciones and uh, part of the group that is working to have data available for every citizen in Puerto Rico through the portal of the government of Puerto Rico. So if you access that, the, the purpose of it is to have all the data and all the analytics that anybody in Puerto Rico needs in order to prepare some proposals or know the state of business in any area here in Puerto Rico. So this is great for me. It will give me more ideas of how I can help out in, the, in those groups implementing this for uh, all citizens in Puerto Rico. That's great. Yeah, you're doing some fabulous work. Well, congratulations. And also, I'd be happy to speak with you afterwards sure. about um, the work that we have done with open data. And one of the things that we've done is to create something which is on our website called Lehman Community Connect. And it's based on the vision of the president, uh, Ricardo Fernandez, uh, to uh, serve in a, a role that extends beyond the walls of the college but supports the residents of the Bronx. And so what we do is we take publicly available open data that comes from the state or the city and we make that available to students, policymakers, and uh, researchers who are um, with regard to um, having a, uh, a, a way for them to use a map-based portal to get information and they can mash up that information. So we have information on education, on health, on population, economic development, things like that, and as well as the college, um, so that people can kind of take that information and use it for whatever community purposes they want to be a proposal, um, to do some research, to improve their community, those sorts of things. So I'll be happy to share that with you. Thank you. Well, I'll give some of you, we'll come back to you in there. Um, but we're doing introductions, and so I'll let you get settled. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Caliero Caballero. I'm an assistant programmer at the University of Universidad Salapato. And I'm from the Department of Education and Technology. I don't know. Thank you very much. Yes, good morning. My name is uh, Nelson Mejias. I'm the IT director for ICPR Junior College, uh, private here community college in Puerto Rico. I've uh, been with them for about 10 years. Uh, been indirectly related to higher ed for about 20. Before that, I was an applications developer. Uh, we've done small, simple things with big data for around three, three and a half years. And uh, I'm very curious as to see what other people are doing. Yeah, to some, to some degree, you know, when we started um, four and a half years ago with this project, the tools that were available um, were limited. They were usually the big companies that um, put things out, and, and it required a great deal of work. Now, because um, the idea of uh, big data and business intelligence is such a huge market. There's lots of smaller startup companies um, that have much more lightweight and low cost tools that are available uh, for people who are wanting to experiment. And I think this is all about experimenting and innovating to um, answer questions that are relevant to your campus and, and your university. Um, and that's how you start. And working in partnership with one or two innovators one or two early adopters to really get um, uh, their needs met, and then they can become champions, uh, like any other IT project. That's often how it, how it starts. Would you introduce yourself? Sorry, Mary. Yes. Good morning. I'm sorry. My name is Mary Roman. Um, I'm from the Borough of Manhattan Community College in New York. Um, I'm the executive assistant to the president. Good. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for the work. Next gentleman in the back, you want to introduce yourself? Good morning, my name is uh, Ramon Mayo. I work in LFA University of Puerto Rico. Uh, I work in, uh, 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 I am a uh, affair technology dean. Uh, uh, excuse me, my English is very bad. I need to translate. <laughs> uh, 
yo, tra eh, yo dirijo el decanato de tecnología de la universidad de DP University eh, el, de el, el, el departamento de IT me responde a, a el decanato y aquí tengo parte de, de mi equipo ¿verdad? el señor Giovanni eh, eh, se encarga de, de, de la administración de la base de datos estudiantil y el señor Luis Pérez también le da apoyo en la, la parte de educación a distancia que sé que es así que ustedes van a, a trabajar no, no está representada aquí ese es un otro decanato se le hizo la invitación pero no pudieron estar en el día de hoy okay. gracias doctor Ramón Mayor Uh, Technology Affairs Dean of EDP University. We have two campuses and two extension centers. He is in charge of uh, everything that has to do with technology. Uh, and, and so, uh, also, we, we, we wanted to, uh, for our distance education dean to be here, but sadly she couldn't come, she apologizes. Um, And, and me, myself, I'm Giovanni Martinez, I'm the database administrator. Uh, the, we, I have been asked to, to, do, to, do, to develop a more uh, insightful report, and so I'm looking forward to, to, this, uh, to, to this activity. And um, he is a Luis Pérez, he does he, he some help this and also he helped me on the database administration. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So we'll start the presentation. Please be roll on. We, uh, we just uh, got through some introductions and uh, expectations, got a better sense of, of um, who you are and your roles at your institutions. Um, we're going to go through Um, a little bit about the evolution of technology um, and then how that relates to business intelligence. Uh, we'll define business intelligence and big data so we have some working definitions as well. Um, we're going to go through and spend most of our time uh, with Lee describing um, what we've done with business intelligence at Lehman because we felt that the best way to show you was to actually demonstrate it. So uh, we've been able through the technology folks here to log into our tool back on our campus and so we'll show you a live demonstration and, um, and there'll be some opportunities for you to actually ask questions and working with Lee we can answer them. We won't be talking about personally identifiable information but we'll talk about information in the aggregate. Um, just yeah, sorry. And then we'll, um, we'll do a little bit about predictive analytics. Predictive analytics is a, a capability that allows you to build scenarios and ask questions. So, for example, how can we retain students? What are the factors associated with attrition and retention? And how can we therefore make uh, early interventions to make sure that, for example, if we decide that students on probation from the data, if students on probation are more likely to not be retained, Um, how will, um, what, what can we do, and how can we measure the impact of our interventions? And then finally, uh, we're going to have some opportunities, uh, in addition to the coffee break, uh, we're going to ask you some questions and ask you to work with small groups so that you can learn from each other and we can learn uh, with you. Okay, how does that sound? All right. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of technology because oftentimes when we think about technology, we, we some of us who are uh, from a few years ago, you know, we focus on the traditional tools that preceded technology, the computer, the typewriter, and that the computer really was something that took manual processes and began to automate them. But we really have to think differently about technology going forward. And what I want to um, suggest is that technology is shifting in major ways and that we're at a very important point in the evolution of technology that will create dramatic changes going ahead. And that in some ways, the changes in technology 
mirror the changes in society. And that what we came from, if, you know, this is a picture in, from the United States in the 1850s. It's a house, uh, very traditional, very stable, with a family in front of the house, and it was very hierarchical at, at, in those times. And that, uh, that kind of way of operating in society has been traditionally how, how we've operated up until perhaps more recent times. But that technology followed that. It was traditional, the, the format was rigorous, um, everything was prescribed, um, it was top down, and we had a single version of the truth. Uh, we tried to make informed decisions based on that. Now, things have changed in society. We've seen that dramatic changes recently. Um, but this is a, 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 a picture uh, that you see on the screen on, the, on your right of uh, a jazz festival in Montreal. And you have thousands of people coming together for a very brief period of time. They are kind of self-organizing. They listen to the music, and then they're gone. As quickly as they come, they're gone. And so this is the new way, I think, of how technology is also um, happening. It's around experimentation. It's around co-creation, working together. There's multiple information types. Um, it's much more collaborative, and it's around having insight and moving ahead in more flexible ways than in the past. And feel free to stop me, ask any questions, uh, challenge me, um, whatever you feel. Please, this is really something that we want to have a, a dialogue with. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. <laughs> this is a chart from Gartner, which is an information research company, uh, which really uh, is something that uh, I think reflects, again, the change in technology. They talk about three modes. The first mode is around what they call IT craftsmanship. And that's the kind of traditional mode of IT delivery of services. It's taking and automating a process. It could be a single process. But it automates that, it makes, it makes us more efficient. And this is something that might have been in the 1980s, 1990s, uh, that you would see within a technology shop. It was really something where technology operated in kind of a silo and didn't really interact. I know a lot of people accuse technologists of not talking to anybody else. That can't be how we operate as, 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 uh, in, in today's world. We have to work in collaboration and in partnership, as I said earlier. Then the middle is really the IT industrialization. It's around making technology and process management more into a science, uh, where um, maybe more than one process was automated, maybe a workflow was automated, where uh, colleagues were treated as customers, and that um, there was really a, a, a gain in productivity. Now we're at the, this inflection point where um, we're becoming uh, much more oriented towards digitalization with the idea that we have um, a, a, a IT is working, and in some cases IT is the business. Uh, in college, IT needs to support the academic side of, of the uh, institution uh, and the administrative side, but really working together to create value. So for example, for those of you who are working in the area of distance education, how does that add great value for your students? Um, how can you uh, expand your institution in new ways that create new models that really create opportunities for, for your institution in terms of your future and your growth? Um, so that's, the, um, that's where we are. But I, I would say one more thing about this is that um, this is kind of related to the mission statement that we have at Lehman College, where this is, our mission statement is deliver, lead, and innovate. So I would say that this would be the delivery, this would be leadership, and this would be innovation. And you need all of those, because even if you're doing great innovation in the technology world, you still have to make sure that these computers run, right? You're as good as the delivery of services on a day-to-day -day basis. But you can't be innovative if you're not doing the day-to-day -day work. Some organizations are beginning to separate their innovation efforts 
from their day-to-day -day management of technology. But that really requires a larger staff. You can, if you have a small staff, it's harder to do that. And most colleges and universities don't have that luxury. So this is not something that is, should be a surprise. But the idea here is that big data is going to change how we do business. And it is already doing that. How many of you think that Google knows everything about you? <laughs> right? I do. I, in some cases, Google and all of these companies that are out there know more about me than I do. Um, they know where you go, where you travel, when you log in, what your location is, what your preferences are. If you use Amazon, same sort of thing. Amazon looks at you and they make recommendations based on people like you who have made similar choices in terms of looking for products. So they're already using big data and they are very good at it and getting better day by day. So why shouldn't colleges and universities uh, in a positive way look at students from the perspective of how we can help them progress, how we can help them achieve their goals and be successful. So let's define some of these terms. So big data is this sort of very large um, term for all the information that's out there. It could be in structured databases. So all of you, do you all use student information systems of some sort? Where you have a, 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 a system of record that has all of the student information. It has their, uh, what high school they came, it has their transcript and grade information, it has the courses they've taken, all of that. So that's a, a very critical system that you use every day that is an important repository. And the other systems that you have on campus, it could be information from your online or distance education systems as well. Uh, but it's not limited to that. Big data can be inclusive of Twitter and Facebook and all the social media that's out there. And it's characterized by what we say three Bs. Velocity, the velocity of information, how the speed and rapidity of information, the variety of information. So it could be from a number of different places, both internal and external. And the variety and velocity uh, and volume of information is the last one. It's just extensive. And so the amount of information in the world is expanding rapidly. I'm sure that's true on your campuses as well. You need more and more storage. And so it's all of those threes. The, the, the three Bs is, is what we refer to them at, at, uh, in terms of what is big data. Variety, velocity, and volume. volume. Now the next is business intelligence. These are the tools that are used to analyze and optimize the use of data, uh, to look for patterns, to look for meaning in the data. So, you know, in some ways, many of you may use Access or may use Excel spreadsheets to begin to look for those patterns. There's a variety of other tools. We use an Oracle tool that was made available by our university to us as a pilot program. But there's a variety of tools that are out there, as I mentioned before, that are low cost, um, that are easy to experiment with, that could be done on a desktop computer. Our tool is a little bit more extensive, um, and we we're fortunate to have uh, Lee and others who really understood how to implement these tools. And we did it actually at very low cost uh, within our institution because we have people with the right skills. It may be that your institutions are Microsoft shops, and so you may have more SQL skills. So you have to find a tool that best fits your institution's needs and budget. And then analytics. This is the idea of what can you extract from the data that can allow you to make statistical inferences and be able to look for patterns that allow you to begin to make predictions. And that is very, that's really where a lot of experimentation needs to be done because you have to be very careful when you talk about students and even students in the aggregate and making predictions. But the, the, this is what's happening at some of the larger universities in the United States, places like Arizona State University, Georgia State University, have done a very good job 
and have very mature systems and tools that allow them to actually give a dashboard to a student so that they could see their progression. They could see what, um, uh, how they're doing um, and what uh, some of the areas of need are and how they can improve. And that information is something that empowers the student and gives them some of their own early warning systems, but it's also available to counselors and administrators so when they meet